In this next tutorial, we'll be learning how to create our own custom brushes inside of Photoshop. And in particular, I'll be looking at how to create your own dirty or grungy brush. Some of these sometimes you can see in the brushes window. And if you look to select your own brushes, just by scrolling down here, you'll see that there are a few defaulted brushes inside of Photoshop. And in an earlier exercise, we saw how to apply some of these brushes. But I'll just pick out one of these custom uh, Photoshop ones here. And as you can see, uh, it looks great, but it's rather small. And if I was, in fact, to uh, increase the size of this particular brush, and you can do that just by increasing the diameter, see the basic shape of it. But notice that it gets a little blurry at this point, and it doesn't look as good as as it would have if it was smaller. What's nice about these brushes is that you can apply them in any number of different ways, uh, either as a mask or um, some other elements on top of text, and you can create a very nice grungy look to things. So for example, I just happen to have an image that's open right here. If it were to have a mask applied to it, um, you can see that I've masked out a portion of that using this brush. But as you can see, I'm not really all that satisfied with it because it gives me this sort of blurred effect when it's increased in size. So along comes the question of, well, if we have one that's that small, how can I make one that's bigger? So I'm going to show you something with a very small, a very small image. It's actually 300 by 300. Not all that much to begin with. But nevertheless, the point being is you could duplicate this uh, same idea with any number of different kinds of sizes and any number of different kinds of images. For example, you can create a brush out of your particular signature. You could create a brush out of a picture, if you wish. But here, I'm going to create a grungy or a different type of brush. So let's see how to do this. Well, in order to effectively use this brush, it's best if we create something that becomes more black and white or in those grayscale tones. So you could certainly turn this into a grayscale image um, by going to the image modes and working to grayscale. However, what I want to do is go into my adjustments and I will in fact, number one, first and foremost, show you what happens when you use a invert. And what happened is, is that I've inverted those darker and lighter colors. You'll notice that there are areas in here that look darker and some are lighter. It does have this bluish tint to it, so I'm going to go to Adjustments, and I'll work with Threshold. And as we can see, by sliding the threshold level, you can see that we've picked up a lot of those black scratches and different elements that are inside of here. So I'll just click OK after some final adjustments, see what it looks like. I like that line that's happening right there. That looks good. So at this point, we can do a number of things. I can create an, a brush out of this entire um, size of the image. And to do that, first I would have to select all, control A. And once doing that, I'll then go to edit, define brush preset. You can give it a name. I've called it after the JPEG stress detail. Let's call it stress detail one because I'm going to make a number of different brushes based on this. So I'll just put that on the side for a second and let's go back to our practice area here and we'll take out some of our brushes. We have a custom brush. So if I scroll down to the bottom, you can see that the width of this is 300. And when I apply it, voila, we have a nice brush that can be applied in just about any number of different areas, any number of different ways. You could have even made a pattern out of this and that would have created a repetitive sort of scene along those lines. However, I'm gonna go back to our original element that we had open. And what I'm going to do is create some other brushes. Try this. I'm going to, not a fixed style, but let's say just normal here. Control D, I'll deselect that. And at this point, maybe I only want this area to be a brush. So I could select only that area. I could define this as a brush preset, and you can see what it looks like here. Um, it's at 300, which does happen to be a little large, so I probably should be cropping this. So let me do this. 
uh, once I have that selection, I could just come to Image. I could crop it into this size. Then if I make my Define Brush preset, you can see what that looks like. If I undo this, you can produce brushes in any number of different ways, different fashion. Um, let me show you using our practice what our brush actually ends up looking like down here. And now I just have this small portion of what's going on. So you can apply this in a number of different ways. Let's go back to that brush example and check it out. If I do, in fact, put in a little element like this, I could apply that brush. All of a sudden, this gets very, very scratchy, sort of overlapping those elements. You can also switch back to one of the other brushes that we've created, larger brush, and you can see how that looks. Maybe we really want to get that scratchiness happening in here. And if you produce this, you can do this at any given size, in any different fashion, any number of different ways, and you can add a whole slew of brushes to your work. Incidentally, if you were to apply this upon some text, it would also show up with a grungy looking text. Many, many different ways to sort of apply this technique and show what it looks like. One last job. You'll notice that a lot of these that we just created uh, seem to have worked into areas where there was a lot of dark space. Well, if I just simply define this area now, I don't think we'll have to crop it, but if we just come in here and say define brush pattern, there's my sample. Click OK. Now I'll go back to that last one, which is the new one which we've created. And notice this one is a little scratchier and doesn't have as much in the way of what it's going to look like. So nevertheless, these are different ways of creating your own custom brushes and how you can do it inside of Photoshop.